Stay tuned for today's episode of the Azure Enablement Show. We were talking about hybrid and multi-cloud adoption. Welcome to the Azure Enablement Show. In this show, we're having technical conversations with Microsoft experts about the questions or obstacles you might face on your cloud adoption journey. Now, in previous episodes, we focused on the cloud adoption framework and how it could help accelerate your cloud adoption journey. Today, we're focusing in on hybrid and multi-cloud. And to talk to me today is Pratiba. Pratiba, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sarah. Happy to be back here with you. Awesome. Now, hybrid and multi-cloud is a journey that a lot of organizations are taking, but what is that journey and why are they actually undertaking it? Yeah, so um, hybrid and multi-cloud, to be really, really honest, today it's a norm for most of our customers. You know, With the push to accelerate digital transformation, um, customers have really expanded their technology investment. So you know, think of it, they have hundreds and thousands of VMs apps running on their um, on-prem data centers. They have apps on the edge infrastructure. They have you know, different branch offices running OEM hardware. They have investments in the cloud as well, but and now even in the cloud, there is diversity with more than one cloud provider. So um, hybrid and multi-cloud, the notion is really to connect up that diverse on-prem infrastructure that customers have with the diverse infrastructure that they have in the cloud. And uh, the second part of your question as to why are our customers thinking about the hybrid and multi-cloud approach, it's, it's really because they're faced with uh, a few realities today. Uh, you know, I'll give you a few scenarios that we often hear from customers on why they have adopted this approach. Uh, one, um, you know, many of our customers are in highly regulated industries, um, say FSI, financial institutions, uh, or healthcare, um, you know, where they need to keep, they have these data sovereignty requirements where they need to keep the data on their um, you know, on-prem physical uh, infrastructure versus the public cloud. Uh, so when you have such requirements you know, where you're restricted uh, to keep your data on-prem, you still want to continue innovating in the cloud, and, and that's where hybrid really becomes a compelling option. Uh, there are other situations where customers have invested a lot in their uh, you know, on-prem, on-prem data centers, and they just don't want to do away with it, but rather you know, add additional value to those on-prem data centers by leveraging the cloud, by bringing some of those cloud services on-prem. And and that's, again, where hybrid really makes sense. Um, There are other scenarios um, such as low latency, uh, latency issues where customers want to reduce the latency by moving the workloads closer to the IoT devices. And that's, again, another uh, situation where where hybrid really comes in useful. Um, And we've seen that customers really need, uh, when it comes to multi-cloud approaches, um, customers really need the freedom to choose their cloud providers and have that flexibility if they need to. And it also makes sense uh, uh, you know, for implementing strategies such as uh, business continuity or disaster recovery, where uh, customers would typically duplicate their workloads across different cloud platforms. So that's when you know, the, the multi-cloud approach really makes sense. So those are some examples where we've seen why customers are embracing um, uh, hybrid and multi-cloud. Now, it seems to me that if our customers are used to having all their workloads and infrastructure in one place, Mm -hmm. actually starting to distribute it to other cloud providers in several locations might actually bring up some challenges. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's definitely complexity here. Uh, uh, You know, I wouldn't say challenges, but what really happens with this approach is there are new needs that the customers have. And as you can see on the visual, you know, I have a slide here to call out the three main customer needs when it uh, when it comes to hybrid. Um, Number one, uh, you know, they really need to have visibility into the health of uh, the resources that are now spread across all these different hybrid endpoints, if you will, you know, on-prem, edge, um, and and the cloud, and the multiple clouds, you know, there there needs to be the central visibility over the state of all these resources through a single pane of glass. Um, Second, we've seen, uh, you know, a lot of our customers have already established their governance uh, policies on-prem, and they'd really like to extend that and integrate that with their cloud infrastructure so that they have consistent um, governance and compliance across the board, no matter where their resources are placed. 
And the third piece that we've seen is, uh, you know, there's so many different app development teams um, with different programming languages, different uh, dev platforms and development practices out there. And there is a need to bring in consistency um, in operability um, to, to unify those development practices. So those are really three main um, needs that we've seen surface when customers are um, embracing the hybrid and multi-cloud approach. And really, it boils down to, um, you know, a balance. On one hand, you want to leverage, you want to accelerate innovation with hybrid and multi-cloud. But on the other hand, you want to ensure that you have the effective unified operations uh, to make sure there is standard compliance governance across the board. Now that you used the phrase there, unified operations, which I've heard a few people mention, but I'm not entirely sure what it means. Could you explain it to us, please? Yeah, so I'd say, you know, whenever we talk about hybrid or multi-cloud, we have to talk about unified operations uh, because unified operations really addresses some of those needs that, uh, you know, um, I, I called out earlier uh, uh, in the earlier question. So unified operations is really the, it's, it's the approach of centrally governing and managing your um, resources, whether they are on-prem, on the edge, or on cloud uh, platforms, you know, the multiple cloud platforms that you may have. Um, having that central control and visibility is what that concept is all about. And in the case of Azure, you know, we have Azure Arc. Um, and, uh, you know, as you can see on the on the slide here that I'm, I'm bringing up now, just give me one moment. Right. So um, Azure Arc really has uh, brings that capability of being the single uh, control plane uh, to manage, to govern, manage and operate your resources, no matter where they live, no matter what they are. So, you know, you could be having um, Windows servers, Linux servers, you could be having Kubernetes clusters or database services residing anywhere. And you could centrally manage that through Azure Arc um, as if they were living on Azure. Um, and that makes it really simple. That makes it you know that really um, uh, implements the vision of unified operations that that I just talked about. So we talked in previous episodes about how great the cloud adoption framework is. Mm -hmm. Does it actually support this hybrid and multi cloud approach for our customers? Absolutely. So, uh, you know, as you mentioned just now, um, Sarah, in the earlier episodes, we have talked about how the cloud adoption journey, how the cloud adoption framework documentation guides the customer's cloud journey, you know, all the way from defining your strategy to your plan, to preparing your cloud environments, to eventually migrating or innovating in the cloud, and then governing and managing. Uh, we have documentation and resources as part of the framework to guide that. What we have now done and what we are now announcing is um, specific content for the hybrid and multi-cloud adoption scenario. So think of it as a layer on top of the cloud adoption framework, wherein you know we've included specific guidance for the scenario uh, and the guidance across these different stages, um, as you can see in the in this CAF slide here. Uh, you know, these are the, the additional considerations that customers have to take into account um, as they go about the journey um, through the phases uh, as defined in the cloud adoption framework. Now, if a customer is implementing a hybrid or a multi-cloud strategy, what mm -hmm. business kind of decisions do they need to think about? Yeah, so I'm going to use the same slide here to walk you through some of, some of those additional uh, considerations, uh, you know, additional decisions that uh, that our customers need to make when they're thinking about implementing the hybrid and multi-cloud approach. So starting with that business um, question that you had, Sarah. So in the business phase, in the in in the defined strategy phase, where customers are thinking about their uh, their business outcomes that they want to achieve out of their cloud adoption efforts, they will have to evaluate if the hybrid and multi-cloud approach can help them accelerate their their strategy can help them achieve their business outcomes so you know if you think about the earlier example that i mentioned in the beginning um, customers that are in highly regulated industries, uh, you know, when they are restricted and they have to keep their data on prem uh, uh, and uh, you know not on any public cloud. In that case, uh, you know, how do you accelerate innovation if 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 those customers want to leverage uh, the cloud? That's when the hybrid connectivity and the hybrid and multi cloud approach really makes sense.
plans. So this consideration for hybrid and multi-cloud scenario has to come in at the right stage, which is in the define your business strategy phase. And this is what we you know, expand upon in the new content that we're releasing as part of the framework. Um, you know, similarly, the plan phase, which is also a, a part of that, that business domain of, um, of cloud adoption. Uh, you know, when you're thinking about your plan, the cloud adoption framework guides you to say that you know, you've got to take rationalization decisions to figure out that uh, you know, whatever workloads you have, whatever assets you have, are you going to rehost them into the cloud? Are you going to you know, rebuild them or re-architect them? Uh, you know, those are a few of the rationalization options. But now with the hybrid and multi-cloud approach, those rationalization options have just exploded. You know, there's so many different pathways that uh, you could consider. Uh, you could move move something from public cloud onto on-prem. You could move something from on-prem to the edge. Um, uh, you know, you could re-host, reverse re-host. You could move uh, re-host stuff between two uh, uh, cloud providers. Um, so, you know, the, the permutation and combinations are just many. And the guidance that we have in the plan phase for the scenario talks about these, these different combinations and what um, best practices you should be considering as you define your plan for hybrid and multi-cloud adoption. That, that sounds really good. Now, when you're building a cloud environment, you need some components like networking and storage and identity and a whole host of other things. How does that change when you're going down this hybrid uh, cloud journey? Yeah, so I'd say this is a critical part of that whole journey that that our customers are on, um, you know, preparing their, their cloud environments. And there are certain configuration changes that will need to be made depending on your cloud mix. And what do I mean by that? So I have a slide here that uh, that elaborates on this. Um, you know, let me just uh, switch here. So, uh, you know, if you see the visual on the on the slide, there are three different scenarios. And think of this, those as three different customer situations. Now, in the first one on the left-hand side, the customer may be having, as you can tell, it, they're having a lot of investment on-prem, you know, some on multi-cloud and some on Azure and some on Edge. But, but overall, it's a very small cloud footprint. So what could this customer do? Uh, with Azure Arc, uh, they could build that central visibility into all those cloud resources that they have so that they have that, again, the centralized unified operations and at the same time that would also set the stage for accelerating uh, more cloud adoption where they could start pushing out stuff from on-prem to Azure or to any other cloud that they wish to use. Um, in the case of the Azure first model that we have in the middle, uh, most of the investments are in Azure. And so, you know, connectivity and networking isn't going to be a lot of challenge for this customer. Um, Azure has native tools to extend the network onto Edge, onto on-prem or to the other cloud providers. Uh, and, and so, you know, they could really focus on cloud native innovation in this case. And in the third scenario where, you know, the, the, this customer has a lot of investments in multiple clouds. Uh, there's some complexity here, but at the bare minimum, uh, you know, they need to think about having that minimum operations baseline um, and uh, you know, connect up the different cloud platforms that they are using in their multi-cloud environment. And overall, you know, when customers go through this phase of reading their cloud environment, they have to make key decisions depending on what's their cloud mix, you know, what's their prominent cloud mix. Um, decisions on identity, like which cloud provider is going to be their main identity provider, uh, which cloud uh, provider is going to be the main destination for backup and recovery. Uh, is there required connectivity between the different uh, cloud platforms, and how do you how do you make that happen? So, so those are the kind of of guidance and, and content that we've put together as part of uh, the new scenario that is included in the cloud adoption framework now. So thinking about governance and management, because that's key and important, regardless of where your workloads are hosted. Mm -hmm. If we dial into the hybrid and multi-cloud story, what does governance and management look like? Yeah, so, uh, you know, for governance and management, it really goes back to the earlier um, question we had around unified operations. And, and, and that's what we really enable with Azure Arc. Uh, what we're doing is expanding the cloud governance capability that already exists onto all these other endpoints for hybrid and multi-cloud, be it on-prem, edge, or the other uh, cloud platforms. You know, Arc, in, in, in conjunction with, you know, native governance tools, say Azure Policy or Azure Blueprint, 
really extends that Azure management com um, capability to any resource, no matter where they live. And providing, you know, what, what this means to the customer is really that unified, standardized governance and compliance that they've all been um, asking for. Awesome. Beyond the cloud adoption framework, is there any place that our customers can go to for additional best practices or guidance um, for this hybrid and multi-cloud journey? Yeah, so you know what we've done with this new content as i mentioned earlier sarah with the hybrid and, uh, and multi cloud adoption scenario we are bringing in content which is uh, you know not just limited to the guidance that we have in cap but all the additional resources that any customer might need to um, to realize their hybrid and multi cloud approach um, you know so on the left hand side on this visual uh, that's the cloud adoption framework which is all about guiding your cloud journey you know across the people process and technology elements with the with the cloud adoption framework guidance in addition now we are bringing in content from microsoft learn so all the course materials that you may need to scale up on hybrid uh, we're bringing it together as part of this content um, reference architectures specific to hybrid uh, are also being included and then well architected content uh, from the well architected framework um, is is also added as part of this this scenario content that we're releasing and similarly best practices and um, you know feature product documentation is also going to be part of the new hybrid and multi-cloud adoption scenario in cloud adoption framework. And uh, the link that you see right at the bottom, that is the one link that uh, I would ask our audience today to remember. That is where this new hybrid um, and multi-cloud adoption guidance is available. So do, do check it out and, and, and let us know uh, if there's any feedback. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today, Pratiba. It's always good to talk to you. Um, and thank you to all our viewers today. And please stay tuned for future episodes of the Azure Enablement Show.